Dear friends, it's my great pleasure welcoming you to the 2021 CIMP business meeting. I think you know my name. My name is Siegfried Kasper and for the next hour, I'm still the president of CIMP before I hand over to Pierre Blier. It's my great pleasure to report to you the members of the CIMP, the progress of our society over the past several years and our plans for the future like more than two years ago when I inherited the leadership of the society after several years under the highly capable and stewardship of Professor John Crystal. I would like to thank John very much for his insights and dedications to the CIMP, both before, during and after his term as president. And as he is now leaving the executive committee, I wish him all the best for the future. On the next slide, you see the agenda. I will report, and then we will have the reports of different colleagues, like the treasurer, Katsutaka Ikeda, then the uh, report by the secretary, Elias Eriksson, then the International Scientific Program Committee Chair, Pierre Blier, and Chikulin, then the Fellowship Award Committee, then the credentials and membership committee, Katsu Ikeda again, the nomination committee, the editor in chief report. Actually, Anthony Grace is sleeping still in the morning in US, so I will take this over. And then the installation of officers. And finally, hand over of the presidents to my good friend Pierre Blier at the end. Let me inform you that throughout the meeting, since it's, a, it's a, a business meeting, you are able to put some uh, questions in the Q&A box, which I will see and address all these questions as we go along with the program then, and uh, we'll try to answer these questions. Needless to say, the report of the business is also available on the website so you can download it now or later that you get the information which will be reported here in this business meeting. The business meeting a few years ago replaced the general assembly. In the old days there were a lot of voting going on and discussions going on. Nowadays this is everything done in a virtual basis like the voting for the president, and the, electric, elec um, the executive committee and councillors, as well as changes in the bylaws and the constitution. So this is the format of the uh, business meeting. May I have the next slide? The next slide is the report by the president. And I would like to make three points. The first is management and governance. The second one, CIMP objectives. And of course, the third very important point, the expression of gratitude and congratulations. So let's start with the management and governance. One of the first points in there is safeguarding CMP throughout difficult times. At the beginning, as my turn as president in 2018, CMP embarked on a new chapter with the election of ICS as the Society's Association and Conference Management Company. We would not have known at this time that the challenges we and the world face right now with the COVID crisis, which led to the postponement for the 2020 World C Congress, which should be taking place in Taipei, Taiwan. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank our colleagues, Xi Kuling and all the Taiwanese colleagues very much for their dedication to bring this, co uh, this conference together and uh, unfortunately, we had to postpone it and then do it on a virtual basis. But we are coming back in 2022, very likely to beautiful island of Taiwan in the old days called Formosa, as we know. And now we have the first uh, ever virtual CIMP Congress. So of course, the COVID crisis they challenged us inventing and reinventing ways to effectively have um, a Congress taking place. And I would like to thank very much the ICS team uh, spearhead by the association manager, uh, 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 Matt uh, uh, Riley, 
and uh, also the association manager, Janik Bremer, and the Congress managers, Marta Collins and Gertrude Chivanji, and also the rest of the ICS team for doing all their excellent tasks for the uh, Congress, like the video, uh, virtual video production and technical support. I think all of you experienced that it went very well. I got a, a large number of messages back that it went wonderful. There were a few little things, of course, happen, and we learn from this uh, few technical breakdowns for the future. So altogether, we did very good, very well. And let me inform you also, the uh, EC, the Executive Committee, um, uh, approved the contract extension with the ICS services until 2022. And from my point of view, hopefully also for the time thereafter. The second uh, quite important point was creating CMP's first virtual World Congress. This was quite a challenge. And uh, I would like to thank once more the ICS staff, but also specifically the core I ISPC group for bringing together a new format for the personal Congress in Taipei. We had different kinds of activities planned, which of course in a virtual format, you cannot take place. So we transformed uh, this format to what you have experienced right here. And um, this, I hope, finds all your uh, approval. And I'm confident that in the future, we will uh, rely on this uh, situation. And in the future means the next CIMP Congress to take place in November in 2021. Hopefully it's in person, but we are not quite sure. We'll learn in the next few weeks and months. If not, then we establish the platform, technologies, and processes in such a way that we can call upon in the future if we need this. The third point is ensuring a long-term financial viability of CIMP. Even before the pandemic, CIMP had taken certain actions to address the deficit spending that had begun to draw down the society's reserves. And uh, we put measures in place to, to ensure its long-term viability, including reducing general expenses, making the World Congress an annual instead of a semi-annual event. Unfortunately, the pandemic interfered with what would have been the first annual Congress in Taipei and forced us to focus more on short-term changes. So with the loss of the revenue in 2020, this was, of course, a challenge, but we took several key actions to minimize the spending, including first launching new web live webinars and a virtual library. And you should be aware that all of these wonderful lectures from this Congress will be also on the virtual library. And I ask you to send out the messages to your colleagues that they can download these uh, uh, wonderful lectures. Like nowadays, it's not so easy to travel to another location and give a lecture. So this CIMP program can be also used for like highlights in different countries, like um, India or South America or European centers, where you can have these up-to-date lectures and discussions going on. Second uh, point for minimize uh, spending is working with ICS to make temporary reductions on our management contracts. So the management contract were once revised and also reduced. And thirdly, we tightly controlled all other expenses. And I thank very much Katsu Ikateda for, uh, for taking care. So as a treasurer for controlling these expenses. Third, uh, the fourth point is then revising the CNP constitution and bylaws and our past president, John Crystal, who joins us later, was very important for this revision. And you know, the CNP has the longest established organization of this kind, founded in 1958. And therefore, the bylaws and constitutions, they are always uh, a, a term for also reviewing and they were reviewed, and I thank the CMP members for 
checking on these new bylaws changes and um, we agree that every three to five years these are these documents will be reviewed again the second important point the cmp objectives we should uh, not forget that we should foster the clinical scientific community and the cmp events both in personal but also virtual represent the most important way for international neuropsychopharmacology community to share new research findings, to learn about new developments and build friendships and collaborations all around the world. I think it's very important that additionally to the national societies or like regional societies like the European, American, South American, Asian, that we have this international group which tries to bring the things together. However, we also have to work together with different uh, societies very effectively, like the American College of Neuropsychopharmacology, the ACMP, or the Asian College of Neuropsychopharmacology, the ASCMP, or the European College of Neuropsychopharmacology, the ECMP. And all of these collaborations are in place together with CIMP. We should, uh, as I mentioned, also foster new activities. And I would like to thank very much our incoming president, our uh, president-elect, I'm sorry, Joseph Soha, for taking the lead in uh, hosting and uh, going to different parts of the world, like in Kenya or India, where I also was taking place, to uh, uh, bring the CIP message there and our understanding of neuropsychopharmacology. The second point in the CMP objectives, which was important also during my presidency, is encouraging diversity in neuropsychopharmacology. As scientists, we know that diversity is the background and we need balances, ensure that questions are considered from every angle and ultimately in the best outcomes. For that reason and many others, I am proud of CMP's commitment to promote diversity in terms of race, age, gender, sexual orientation, disability, philosophical and religious beliefs, cultural backgrounds, health status, and language. I think a very important point. And there is a diversity task force led by Professor Chashiri Kulkarni, constantly working to increase the diversity among the CMP membership and leadership. And as you see, the 2021 to 2023 executive committee enjoys greater diversity. We cannot accomplish this goal without your help of the CIMP members. So please take a moment if you uh, consider a nominee for a CIMP award who might have been overlooked living in another country and you have a, a student or a young scientist who might need a mentor uh, or diverse candidate deserving nomination for a CIMP uh, leadership position. So there is more that we can uh, do and should do in this area, I am aware of this. Lastly, the third most important point, expression of gratitude and congratulations. In addition to those whom I thanked earlier, I would like to take the um, opportunity to thank my fellow CNP members for giving me the opportunity to lead this wonderful CNP society as a president, I was with CMP as a counselor, as a secretary, and then incoming president. I very warmly thank all the members for giving me the, the chance to serve as president. I also thank the CMP association and conference staff member, the ICS, for their invaluable assistance. Without their hard work and accomplishment, a society and this kind of Congress would not have been possible. I would like to once more also thank my deepest gratitude to the members of the CIMPEC for the dedicated service, including past president John Crystal, president-elect Pierre Blier, vice president Joseph Sohar and Shikulin, secretary Elias Eriksson and treasurer Katsutaka Ikeda, as well as our councillors. I would like to congratulate the following individuals for the election to the CIMP office from 2021 onwards, Joseph Sohar, President-elect, Maria Oquendo, from US Vice President, Katsutaka Ikeda, Treasurer, 
Gabriela Gobi from Canada, a secretary, and Noboho Hiroi, Minchi Huang, Carlos Serrada, and Tian Mai Si as councillors. I'm also honored to remain on the EC as immediate past president. Lastly, but most importantly, I congratulate CNP members for their wisdom in electing Pierre Blier to the CNP's new president. Pierre, I was aware like a few years ago, we were walking after a CNP meeting in London and we are going to one of the museums and I was so delighted to hear that you consider also being a candidate for president elect. These were good times and I'm very happy about this outcome. I've greatly valued the collaboration and I'm pleased to pass on the role on such an accomplished leader. Although the last past years have been challenging and many of those, those challenges will continue to be present for the foreseeable future, I see great things ahead of CIMP. Thank you very much for listening to my president's report. Let's continue with the next slide. That's the treasurer. Katsu, please, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Kazutaka Ikeda from Tokyo, uh, the CNP treasurer. We faced a critical time for the colleges. The uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, affected not only the CNP World Congress, but also the overall finances of the college. So together with the CNP Executive Committee, I took several measures in order to ensure long-term financial stability of the CNP. The first decision we made was to move two investments funds from a high risk portfolio into a medium risk portfolio. This decision was very well timed as the economy was tremendously impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and the extent of the impact decreased with the uh, change of change to the medium risk portfolio. And CNP 2020 Taipei Congress was originally scheduled for June 2020 and postponed to this virtual Congress. So we reached out to the International Convention Center in Taipei, Taiwan, the Congress venue, and agreed on a postponement of the contract to 2022. Uh, this was the first big step to reduce the expenses in 2020. And moreover, uh, our management company, ICS, was willing to offer a management package for the work done for the in-person Congress, as well as the organization for the virtual Congress. So this further reached out, uh, uh, this further reduced our uh, budgeted expenses to minimum. Additionally, the expenses and income of the college were thoroughly reviewed in order to ensure an increase in the income and to contain the expenses. When the annual World Congress normally takes place without pandemic, uh, additional income will be generated, which allows CNP to further contribute to the field of neuropsychopharmacology. So lastly, I'd like to thank you to the CNP head office for their uh, nice assistance and Eddie Plus for the role of auditor and the members of executive committee and the finance and the budget committee for the fruitful collaboration. And in the next slides, yeah, uh, this is the 2019 funds and 2020 projected funds. As the past year uh, just ended, uh, these figures are to be audited by our auditor uh, and could be slightly changed. Our membership fee income increased in 2020. Athens meeting was held in 2019. Regarding journal income, the, the editorial support fee about 50,000 US dollars for 2020 was accidentally paid by the publisher, uh, Oxford University Press in 2019. So the actual journal income is about 100K per year stably. Uh, regarding expenditures, uh, there is no Congress expenditure in 2020 and the charitable expenditure is slightly reduced uh, compared to 2019. So totally we lost about 700,000 US dollars during these two years. 
So that's all. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, then I would like to give a brief report as uh, secretary, now outgoing secretary of the CMP. And then um, first I could just mention that we, according to the tradition, had uh, from 2018 to 2020 a number of uh, in-person meetings. And you can see where these were held. Usually they were combined with a, either a CMP World Congress or an ACMP meeting or, 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 and, and so on. And, and this is where we met in person, but then uh, the pandemic uh, happened, of course, in 2020. So since then, uh, we only have had online meetings, virtual meetings, but a lot of such uh, online meetings, in fact. And I think uh, by and large that the CMP uh, very effectively and, and successfully adjusted to the new pandemic situation. And that was uh, very much thanks to our excellent uh, head office and to our very energetic president who took a lot of initiatives were taken. We had a lot of uh, virtual meetings. We followed, of course, the corona situation closely. And we finally had to decide to go for uh, make this meeting, as you all know, uh, virtual. So I think, the, of course, as for everyone else, this uh, meant problems for CMP, but I think that we handled the situation the best way it could be handled, in fact. And I hope that we will be able to meet in Montreal uh, in November. We don't know that yet, but let's hope for the best, thanks to the vaccines and so on. Uh, so, uh, if I should, uh, since this being my um, last uh, uh, business meeting as secretary, I would like to give a few comments, uh, not only for, regarding this period, but also the period before where I also was secretary. Uh, and I think, first I would like to say that I really think that CAMP is important. I think uh, we are uh, the only truly global psychopharmacology organization. And that is a very important role. So I, I do really think CMP is important. And I also, I'm very optimistic about the future for CMP. I think we will have a prosperous future. One very encouraging development during the past year, we have had problems definitely. Uh, 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 we have struggled with, with the financial issues and so on and so forth. But one very uh, 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 encouraging development during the past year has been a uh, considerable increase in the interest in CMP from Asia and several Asian countries. That has uh, both in the forms of many new members and also high uh, attendances from, from this part of the world at our meetings and congresses. So that is very encouraging. And for the forthcoming years, uh, of course, we must strive for a similar development also in other parts of the world. Uh, parts where we have never been as strong as we would like to be, and also parts where we perhaps have been stronger than we are today, such as Europe. So, but the, with the Asia example, I think we can be optimistic in this regard. I think we took, had, has taken a very important decision recently in CMP. And I think that importance of that decision should be emphasized. And that is to have arranged the World Congress on an annual basis rather than biannually. And I, I personally think that this uh, is uh, very much a way uh, to increase the interest in the organization. Uh, but of course, uh, we will also have to make these congresses attractive, both for active researchers on wanting to exchange views on recent data uh, and for clinicians uh, mostly wanting an update uh, in relevant areas of psychopharmacology. I think we have presented very uh, high quality scientific programs at all our world congresses. I think we can be proud of our programs, uh, but I think we can be even better. So I think uh, with some new thinking and some new events and so on, it could be even better than today. And I think in that way, we'll be, we will be able to, to uh, attract uh, uh, even more attendances in the future from all around the world. Uh, then, of course, needless to say, an important development forced upon CMP, as well as uh, many other organizations following the pandemic, uh, has been the utilization of virtual alternatives to uh, congresses and educational activities. 
And of course, we all look forward uh, to meet again. Uh, Siegfried uh, talked about the uh, importance of friendship uh, uh, among psychopharmacologists across the world, and that is important. And for uh, that to develop, the uh, uh, real IRL meetings are, of course, very important. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it's also obvious that uh, CMP will have good use for uh, including virtual alternatives also in the future. So we asked for many other parts of society in that sense, the pandemic has brought some good that we have realized the usefulness of, of, of uh, virtual activities uh, together with our real Congresses. And just an example, there have been some very nice webinars from CIMP as an educational effort. And I think uh, we could do very much more of that kind in the future to spread the uh, spread information uh, throughout the globe in important psychopharmacology issues. So uh, this, I, I really do think that there is a reason for optimism and I, I congratulate Pierre to the very uh, satisfying position that he will now uh, enter as, as president of this, of this organization. Uh, and of course, I would also like to thank the, the outgoing president Siegfried, who has, as I said, been a very uh, energetic and positive and, and, and uh, optimistic uh, president uh, when we really needed uh, such a person uh, as leader of CMP. Uh, finally, I would just like to say that I have uh, very much enjoyed uh, this time as secretary. It has not been very hard. It's not very hard work for Secretary of CMP, but it has been very enjoyable. And we have had a very nice uh, executive committee, a lot of good friends there and a good spirit. Uh, I am, I rest assured that the, my successor, uh, Gabriela Gobi, will be in impeccably successful and effective as secretary. So it's a very, it's clearly an improvement from today when she will enter that position. Uh, and I uh, uh, finally would like to thank uh, all, all the, first the CMP members that once elected me secretary and also my good friends in the EC. I wish you the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for Elias for this very positive work and I thank you very much for all your dedication you did for EC as I mentioned in my introduction. Dear colleagues, let's continue. Now we have the next uh, slide by, inco by incoming president Pierre Blier. Pierre, please. Thank you. Uh, I've been in this role actually uh, several times, uh, especially since uh, 2012. So we had a very uh, active committee uh, so we had uh, nearly uh, 100 uh, submission. The quality was very high and uh, everybody was asked to rank these uh, symposia on a scale of 1 to 10. And then we met and made the final selection uh, to ensure that we had uh, uh, all topics covered of very high quality scientifically clinically and that within each symposium actually we had diversity we had uh, young investigators we had uh, female investigators as well and uh, so i think it was a very uh, balanced uh, program that we were able to uh, to put together by this very distinguished group next slide please so these are the the statistics for uh, attendance at the meeting uh, we had uh, 740 delegates and importantly, uh, reflecting the international diversity. So over 50 countries were represented. As it was mentioned, uh, the top countries were from uh, Asia, but uh, as well uh, North America. Uh, we have remarked that actually uh, uh, we did not have uh, enough, I think, participation from, from Europe. And this is something that we would like to uh, change in the future. So we have to cut down on the number of uh, sessions uh, because of the format of the, uh, of the symposia. So a total uh, of 34 sessions. So initially uh, we had 24 symposia that we had to cut down, but actually we were able to uh, shift some of these uh, symposia to, to the next meeting, the Montreal meeting. And then we had uh, some sessions in, in Mandarin and we had very good support actually from the industry, uh, which is, uh, has allowed us to 
have a, a very nice budget for this uh, meeting. Next slide, please. So, Shikulin, could you please uh, uh, tell us about the distribution of the virtual Congress? Who participated? Shikulin, you... okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. As our original Congress uh, was planned uh, in Taipei, so uh, we had many faculties, in, including uh, uh, speakers and chairperson from uh, Taiwan and then Japan. But the still USA and Canada contribute a lot to the faculties. And we are very happy that at least we have one third of female faculties. This is very important. I think uh, in the future, we need a more uh, uh, gender balance uh, for our uh, members and our, uh, our faculties. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shiku. So let's come to the next point. Uh, this is then again, with Elias, he is not, was not on the uh, secretary, but he also headed very effectively the fellowship and awards committee. Elias, please. Yes, we are. I will just briefly mention that we have had this committee and this committee works in close collaboration with the EC. So for most of our awards first, uh, nominations are, uh, are submitted to this committee. And this committee makes a preliminary list uh, of uh, a short list of candidates and then the final decision for most of our, uh, uh, our awards, not all of them, but most of them uh, uh, resides with the EC. So it's an input both from this uh, fellowship and award committee and from the EC with respect to the final uh, awardees. And um, I would like to thank all the members of this committee. They have very effectively provided uh, ratings when asked for that in a, a speedy manner. So, so it has, this has worked smoothly. And I think we have had a list of very highly qualified uh, awardees uh, for the last past years that we can be proud of. So I would like to thank the committee members of this award committee. Thank you. Next slide, yes. Uh, yeah, and this is just uh, to show you the different slides that we have. And of course, our most prestigious uh, prize is a Pioneer Award, uh, where the awardee also receives the Arvid Carlson Medal. And uh, then we have the uh, Max Hamilton Memorial Prize that is uh, uh, usually uh, deals uh, with, uh, with um, uh, research related to depression and is given to a young researcher. And then we have the Brain Health Clinical Research Award uh, uh, where we have and also a basic uh, brain health research award. So there are two awards, uh, one for clinical research and one for basic research. We have also an ethics prize. And then we have a, a prize called Raffelson Young Investigator Award um, named after a previous EMP president, Ole Raffelson from Denmark. And, and uh, the, these uh, these awardees are, of course, as you probably know, invited to the Congress to present their findings uh, as they did yesterday at the Air Offensive Symposium. And then finally, we have a so-called Student Encouragement Award. This is uh, the reason, the, the uh, idea behind this is to provide for young researchers, they could be still PhD students, for example, uh, to attend CMP Congress uh, to in that way uh, uh, has their first steps into this international world of psychopharmacology. So these are the prizes that we uh, give out and we will now uh, present uh, the awardees uh, and I will then give back the word first to Siegfried. Thank you very much, uh, Elias, for pointing out, as Elias said, the most prestigious award is the CMP Pioneer Award, which was given to three colleagues. And as you heard in the opening ceremony, unfortunately, two colleagues, Tony Svensson and Ole Honikiewicz, died in between uh, Tony Svensson uh, due to the COVID disease and Ole Honikiewicz at the age of 94 uh, died uh, from natural death. So to both of them, I spoke in person and they were very honored and uh, very much looking forward to coming in these days to Taipei. But unfortunately, they could not make it, as I said. But we are very, help uh, very uh, uh, also thankful that Judith Rappaport 
the former NIMH director of the Child Psychiatry, accepted also our, uh, our uh, nomination for a Pioneer Award. And uh, they gave also nice little videos, which you can see then also on the homepage. And as I mentioned, uh, as Elias mentioned before, they get the, the Arvid Carlson Medal, our former CIMP president and Nobel laureate. He was CIMP president in 1978 and received his Nobel Prize at the beginning of 2000. And all of them are, of course, very, um, very honored. And uh, those two colleagues who died, unfortunately, the medal will give them to their relatives. Thank you very much. And I go back to, we come back to Elias, please. Elias will present. Uh, I just try to uh, unmute, okay. Mark so uh, we have this, uh, you hear me now, yeah. We have this CMP Max Hamilton Memorial Prize that we have uh, had for many years. And of course is in the honor of Max Hamilton, uh, who uh, for example, created the first uh, uh, rating scale or the first widely used rating scale for depression, the Hamilton depression rating scale. And uh, usually this prize has been given to young researchers working in the field of depression or affective disorder logic. And this uh, year, we were pleased to give this to Miu Hong Chen, who is uh, from uh, the uh, National Yang Ming University in Taiwan. And, and uh, he is a young researcher having done important work in the treatment of, of uh, treatment resistant depression, mainly, for example, related to TMS. So we were happy to, to give this prize to him. Uh, if I have the next slide. Uh, then uh, uh, Sumitomo Sunovion has very generously supported the two brain health uh, clinical uh, uh, brain health awards. And I would uh, like to thank the company uh, very much for this generosity. We very much appreciate that because these, we believe, are important awards that we also have had under somewhat different names throughout the years and somewhat different sponsors, but now they are called the Brain Health Award and they are supported by Sumitomo Synovium. And we have one uh, uh, awardee in uh, basic research and one awardee in clinical research, as I said. And this year, the prize for basic research uh, uh, went to a very worthy recipient, that is Tibor Harkani. Uh, Tibor uh, shares his time, I believe, between Kalinski Institute in Stockholm and University of Vienna, and has really been a pioneer in, in Next slide, other... Next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Ah, sorry, I put them in the wrong order. Sorry. <coughs> this is Tibor Hakane. <laughs> thank you, Siegfried. <clears throat> this is uh, the, uh, the, the uh, basic research already. And, and, and um, um, as I said, he has uh, elucidated both the role of and the mechanism uh, underlying uh, this role for the endocannabinoids, a, very, a large number of important papers in that field. And if you then can go back to the slide regarding the uh, clinical uh, research brain health award that will has uh, been awarded to Gustavo Turecki and he is from McGill in Canada and a very productive uh, researcher studying uh, among many other things suicide and depression and uh, exploring uh, 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 etiological factors both environmental factors and biological factors for suicide and also the interplay between uh, environmental factors and biological factors in the uh, very uh, hot field of epigenetics. Again, a very worthy uh, uh, awardee. So uh, we are pleased really for our selection this year. Harkani and Tureki are to be congratulated. Thank you so much to Sumitomo Sunovian to make this possible. Thank you very much. And we continue with the chair of the ethics committee, Shiku Lin from Taiwan. Shiku, please. Yes, uh, the ethics prize was uh, the scholar who have uh, contributed to the uh, ethical issue in psychiatry, especially the human rights of our uh, psychiatric patients. And uh, in this year, we have awarded Professor Paul Epperman from Columbia University. He is uh, created uh, with conceptualizing the idea of the therapeutic misconception in which a subject in 
Medical research studies misunderstand the primary purpose of their contract with the research team as treatment. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we continue with the Fellowship of Work Committee with uh, President-elect Joseph Soha will present. Joseph, please. Thank you, Siegfried. So basically, as we all know, the future of each organization is based on in engagement of young colleagues, uh, young re researcher. And this is the purpose of this award and the following award. In this award, uh, the people are selected uh, from international <coughs> a, a basis and they are going, as Elias mentioned, to present their finding in this meeting. And as you can see in this particular uh, uh, event, there are uh, people from the United States, from Australia, from Austria, from China, and from UK. So it's really international di diversity there. And uh, uh, male, female is four to two. Uh, if we move on to the next one, the next one, is along the line of this, but this is encouraging to attend the meeting. And again, it's along the line of encouraging young people to join and participate in the CNP meeting. And as you can see, there are people from Taiwan, from Japan, from Austria. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> uh, from all over the world. Again, emphasizing the international aspect and the diversity aspect. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joseph. And let's uh, come to our past president. John joined us also. John, could you report us on the nomination committee? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge our uh, first our, our uh, committee members uh, for the nominations committee, Bita Mogadam, uh, Michael Davidson, Rainer Ruprecht, and Shiku Lin. Uh, we received uh, outstanding nominations from the membership and, um, and uh, developed a slate uh, that was ratified by the executive committee. Um, in the first round of elections, uh, Professor Joseph Zohar was elected president-elect and Gabriela Gobi was elected secretary. Um, because Dr. Zohar had been a vice president, we then had a second election in which, um, uh, which elected Maria Okendo. I should also say in the initial election, the following councillors were elected, uh, Professors Noburo Hiroi, Ming-Chi Huang, Carlos Serrati, and Tian Mei Si. And um, so we were very pleased uh, to uh, be able to uh, support the election of a wonderful uh, uh, slate of new leaders for CINP. And, and let me just say uh, uh, that uh, this is the last of my activities as past president. And I want to thank my colleagues on the executive committee and uh, congratulate uh, President Siegfried Casper and welcome our new president uh, Pierre Blier, uh, knowing that our, uh, our uh, college is in good hands. So uh, thank you, everybody. And I uh, return this back to uh, Professor Casper. Thank you very much, John. I, I know that you were uh, in the, uh, as a chair of the of a debate, so you could not hear the first part of my president's report, where I thanked you very much for all your capable stewardship over the past years when you served as the incoming, then the president and now the past president, it was always a great pleasure to work together with you and to learn about your knowledgeable things in psychopharmacology and how you run the society. Thank you very much, John, again, and uh, hope we can count on you and we wisely selected you for the chair of the International uh, program committee for the Montreal Congre Congress, so you will be with us in the next uh, years. Thank you very much, John. Thank you.
So let's continue with uh, Katsu, a, a very uh, effective credential and membership committee chair. Katsu, could you please continue? Okay, I'm also the chair of uh, credentials and membership committee chair. And, uh, uh, and this shows the member of the committee and Elias, Junsu, Bita, uh, Yasumasa, uh, Rena, uh, and Alan. Um, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the numbers of CNP paying members were 542 in 2019 and 574 in 2020. So fortunately, 184 members newly joined CNP in 2019 and 2020. Uh, this number is twice compared to that in the previous two years period. So thank you for your cooperation. Thank you very much, uh, Katsu, and thank you on behalf of CIMP that you very effectively managed to bring in so many new members. Uh, members. I think no head of the membership committee ever before uh, managed to bring so many colleagues together. This is a special thanks for you, Katsu. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Let's continue with the next slide. So unfortunately, Tony, Tony Grace, the editor, the new editor in chief said, oh, Siegfried, it's quite early in the morning for me, Sunday morning, would you mind taking over my part? So I thought, well, I'll take it over. So uh, uh, Tony put these slides together with ICS. And I just would briefly like to inform you that there was also a selection committee for the new editor in chief and Anthony took over from Alan Fraser. And since the term of Pierre Blier, myself ended, he appointed also two new field editors, Michael Tace and David Morilak. So together with the other field editors, we wish them all the best. Let's look a little bit on the next slide to the statistics. So the statistics uh, indicate there is a total number of 159 submissions every year, and most of them are regular research, like in 2019 and 2020. And the rejection rate is like around 40. You know that we are right now an open, we have an open uh, journal which the participants have to pay. And I would like to inform you also that you should tell the uh, members of the CMP that the payment for the page charge is about half of this, what they would uh, pay if they are non-members. So probably this encourage them also to get a CIMP membership, a quite important message. So on the next slide, please, the next slide, you see the impact factor, which was uh, rising a little bit. And of course, we have high expectations on our editor in chief to rise it even as I think the bar should be at least above five. I don't think we cannot get the skyrocketing impact factor, which our uh, past president John Crystal gets with his uh, biological journal. But I think we should have it in this direction. So we wish all the best for our new editor-in-chief, Tony Grace, and the new field editors, and also the members of the editorial board. I would like to come now to next slide, please, to once more thank very much uh, to John Crystal and Elias Eriksson. Both of them also expressed all already their wishes to CIMP and I would like to give it back. Both of you did an outstanding job and uh, we hope we can count on you in the future. And I would welcome to the new role, uh, Pierre Blier uh, as a president, uh, Joseph Sova, the president-elect, and our two new members of the executive committee, Maria Okwendo and Gabriela Gobi. This brings me now to the hand over to the president and it indicates to me that my time as president is over. I thank everybody very much. And I wish Pierre all the best for the coming years. And of course, needless to say, I have the great honor and pleasure to serve as the past president. So Pierre, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, Siegfried. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you and uh, you and I actually share a uh, common path. Uh, we were both uh, counselors for four years and served on the EC for four years in different roles and now a presidency elect. So it's, it's really uh, nice to follow in your, in your footstep. And uh, I would like to say that 
uh, you uh, always uh, led a really democratic uh, executive committee decisions were made together under your leadership and it was uh, really highly appreciated so as you mentioned i think it's very important to have safeguards for the continuity of, of cinp in these uh, very difficult time and uh, for example uh, you uh, decided to you had to uh, continue your presidency uh, as the uh, world congress was postponed so your term was was longer so that meant also a lot more work for you and we all thank you for taking on these uh, these extra uh, duties so in the future uh, i will uh, continue to ensure uh, the safety of of cinp so its uh, financial viability and the scientific standard i think which has been really outstanding in the last uh, meetings i would say since the last 15 years we've had really fantastic meetings of high uh, quality and uh, we have a lot of knowledge to share uh, worldwide and uh, i want to make sure that uh, this is uh, ongoing and again continuing in your in your path siegfried i'm glad you'll be staying on and it's uh, now my pleasure as uh, acting president to uh, award you the arvid carlson medal so this is something that you can really proudly uh, put in your office or your home so siegfried uh, many many thanks from all the membership of cinp from the executive committee for your hard work and you're not off the hook we'll be calling on you for the next two years and maybe even more afterwards so again siegfried congratulations thank you very much and all the best i think uh, the new president will end right yes so i would like to uh, thank you for attending this uh, business meeting the 35 people that are uh, online uh, thank you again for uh, participating in this uh, in this very uh, active committee i think it was a, a great success and we have many more uh, events uh, to sponsor and to participate in and uh, so i would like uh, to wish you uh, good health so that you can participate in our future activities at uh, cinp so thank you for attending